I believe that is racism. Really? Because you're grouping a group of people into one. So he shouldn't make you safe? Make me safe how? As an American, from our enemy, foreign enemies. He's making white America safe. He's not making black America safe. He's not making he's not making Hispanic America safe, Mexican America How safe. How's he gonna make a white American safe but not you? You're in America too. No, I don't get the same respect that white Americans get. From whom? From from people in general. Are you serious? And why not? Why not? Because I'm a black male and I'm an educated black male. I'm a threat. What are you talking about? Who are you a threat to? I'm a threat to anybody. Are you a threat to white people? I'm a threat to them, I'm a threat to you. How are you a threat to me? But so you feel like you're a threat? I, 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 feel, I feel that any time that you... You don't even look I, like a threat. I, I... What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Very X. Bumming at you with a brand new video. Hey, man, today we got a banger, man. Today we got Jesse Lee Peterson again. And he coming with a video with some dude who thinks he's a threat. I don't know much about it, bro, but y'all know if y'all seen the intro. If y'all like the intro, man, be sure to like the video. Because if you like the intro, you're going to like the video. Comment, you got something to say about the video or me. Subscribe if you're new and mess with the content, man. Without further ado, let's get into it. You have a, a teenage son, right? Yeah. How old is he now? 15. And he was born out of wedlock? Yeah. How is, how is he doing? It's great. Yeah, you're close to him. Yeah. So you talk, is he out here now? No, he's still out in Louisville? Kentucky. 4.0 student, uh, plays 12 instruments. Uh, moving on to the 10th grade now, uh, been on the honor roll since he was, uh, since he's been in school. So and you're had, able to yeah. be a part of his life. Oh, yeah, and that. definitely. Yeah. Which is most important, being a man of character or doing well at his academics and music? I would say doing, excelling at what he does. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's most important. Um, crime in the black community, especially with black men and now black girls, uh -huh. black on black crime, yeah. is going up in Chicago. It went up 80%. Police officers pulled back. Yeah. If they were young men of character, would the crime go through the roof? I flew back to Louisville uh, about three weeks ago, and I got it. My mom lives in the West End of Louisville, which is a low poverty neighborhood on one side, and it's great on the other side, and it's like different, like it's a mixture. Right. And um, they were spraying uh, nitrous oxide. That's what it said on the truck, but it it was coming out like basically like somebody hit a vow. Now, they're not, they don't do this in the white communities. They're doing this in the black communities. Now, when you look at that and you talk about studies of like chemtrails, uh, even in the jail system that they put uh, things in, the, in the, the water and put it in the juices that they give the inmates to make them sterile and some makes them violent, then you want to like, wow, what is it? So but when you got the, a society that is being doped, uh, and what I mean by dope, that they're in certain different chemicals into foods and different reactions and like those things like that. I think it can make people more violent, and especially if you're trying to get people to de depopulate themselves. And that happens all the time. So it's, it's one of those things like, why is it that only in the black community and Hispanic community that you have a high, high level of violence? It's never like 2% or 3% in a white community. It's always like 80% jump. Are you saying <laughs> that the violence in Chicago, the black on black violence went up because they, they are spraying there? I, I, I think it's one of the things, but also I think numbers are screwed as well. I think if, if I can get you to fear, uh, fear the inner city, mm -hmm. if I can get you to fear and buy more locks, buy this kind of car, buy this kind of gun, buy this kind of safety device, you can scare America into buying, buying, buying. So, so it's you, always back to big business at the end of the day. That's no you're difference. Right. You do have right. some of that going on. They put fear yeah, in it's you not some of to it. get a reaction. It's not some of so it. So you're saying that this black on black violence is due to fear that is really not as bad as people are saying. I mean, I think it's. And it's due to spraying. I think it's scare tactics. Even when I lived in Indiana, uh -huh. it was going on what part? in, in uh, Gary. Okay. And it was going on in Chicago, right? Yeah. And it wasn't as bad as it is today because no one dealt with it, so it got worse. And at that time, they were not spraying or doing all that. But you, it's, but that's weird. I mean, it's very interesting to say he's spraying certain blocks like it, like air don't travel. Um, and I'm pretty sure it would travel a pretty good distance. So if they spray that single area, I mean, we all know that's how illnesses and, and diseases get brought everywhere. Like it's literally just in one area. And it spreads. So, 
Uh, I'm not really sure what he, his point on was about that. Then saying that they contaminate the water system in certain schools, like there's no schools with just black people in them. Uh, so that's kind of weird to say, to think about too, especially once you get to high school, it's like everybody. So I don't know about that. I'm kind of confused right there, but I'm gonna go ahead and tune into the video. I'm still giving him the benefit of the doubt right now. You know, that was, that was some crazy stuff though. When you look at the situation in Dallas, Texas, where the bikers were shooting at each other and they they had this big shootout, the pole, these was all white bikers, all white bikers, over 500 of them. They got in a big gunfight. Right. The police was there basically just chilling. When they were locking them up, they were sitting in chairs, they were sitting relaxed. But then you had some teenagers go to the wrong part of Dallas, Texas, to a pool party that they were invited in. You got police slamming little girls on the ground, beating kids up. That's kind of, that's weird, but which one did they show more on TV? You didn't hear anything more about the but bikers. The police, that incident in, in Dallas happened uh -huh. because those kids, there were too many of them there. But this was that too somebody, many of them there versus guns? No, listen to this. Okay. This was that some person, that young girl that lived mm -hmm. in that place. Yeah. It was overpopulated. They had a party rec, rec room for uh -huh. them, and they were supposed to invite X amount of people to the party. Yeah. They sent out all these tweets and invited everybody in their mom, and all these black kids showed up, uh -huh. and then someone called and said, hey, the music loud, too many kids in one area. Uh -huh. The cops go there to clear it out somewhat. The kids overreacted to the cops. That's why that happened that way. Would you? But I'll tell you why off the real, you're going to see more of the situation through social media. If you just think about it realistically, um, obviously something like that is going to get shared way more than bikers having a shootout. People are not going to share that that much. I mean, that's not really crazy. We've been knowing bikers was like that. Bikers been doing that kind of shit. That's why the back bikers got that stigma around them because they know they known as like tough motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? But like for the black party, the pool party, overcrowded, and you know people got it was violence that was that was seen on camera. Of course, that's gonna get shared more, bro. Uh, it's a money game. All this is a money game. Hell, if I if I knew about that and I thought my people on YouTube would like to see that, I would post about it. But I know that we don't want to see that. You know in my community, but certain communities do. And that community is way bigger than my community. <laughs> Fear, so you're a police officer and someone calls you and say, hey, uh, Jesse, we got a bunch of kids out here being kids, jumping in the pool. Or would you be scared of that or would you have, hey, Jesse, they're shooting. Which one are you scared of? Well, you don't know that. No, they call which, like which that. one? Which they one? Call the, hold the, on. The which mother one? That call? Which one? But she didn't which call. One, which here. one would make but, you but be you like? Up an which which one's a, which one's a scare tactic? The the a bunch of kids black. Okay, just say black kids. They're going crazy. They're dancing, jumping in the pool. Or right, we got a bunch of bikers with guns shooting at each other. We got ten oh, people dead. Oh, that to the no, so no, I'm asking you as if you were an officer or you were dispatch. Which one would you want to, hey, we need 50 police over to the kids' party, or we need three police over to the motor? Which one would you switch? Well, it depends depend on the situation? Oh, no. Because the cops didn't go there to fight with the kids. But let me just okay. ask because of but time. But you still didn't answer the question, though. It depends on the situation. The if, situation? I just gave you a, a simple of situation. Guys. You got kids over here jumping in the pool. Don't supposed to be in this neighborhood. There's no violence. There's no gun. There's no nothing. They just in the wrong neighborhood. They don't live there. They're, they're, not they're bad kids. In the wrong neighborhood. And then you got people, you got grown men, bikers, 500 of them, shooting at each other at a diner, which one would you react more to? Would you say, hey? Well, of course it would be the one with the guns. Okay, so why is it in that situation, it was reversed? Why is it that the, that the rowdy police went to fight the kids and then the ones with the guns went over and said, hey, you know something? They're okay, they're just killing each other. Let's sit them down. We're gonna lock y'all up and put you on a bus. But with the situation in Dallas, and I'm, I don't know about the one with the, uh... Uh, the bikers. the bikers. Okay. But you're making up stuff about the Dallas no, it's, one. It's, it's not, that it's, did not, it's not made up. It, it did minute. happen. I reported on this over it, and over again. It did again happen. On my radio show. It did happen. It did happen. not happen the way you were saying it. So, how did, so, so the mother called. Were guns involved? With, not that I'm aware of. At the bikers? I don't remember. There was no guns involved. I don't involved. know about the biker one. Are you serious? They ran it on the news. I that doesn't mean I know you about it. You know for guns. I got to move so forward, you know for but let me tell you. Okay, go ahead. You were dramatizing the one in Dallas. It didn't happen that way. Because you're talking. Something wrong with him, bro. Uh, either he he feminine. I don't see no feminine in him. So most likely he's just emotional. Uh, he's not letting Jesse Lee Peterson talk, and you know he cutting in on everything. He asking hypotheticals, which I understand, but you can't compare the two 
you can't compare two situations with it, hypotheticals. It doesn't work like that. So basically, he, he putting up a realistic scenario and then a hypothetical and trying to compare it. It don't work like that, bro. And at the end of the day, we not them. So we don't understand how the cause they got and how, how it happened. You know, uh, I'm not a cop either. Uh, if it was on me, I wouldn't even go to the cop. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't go to the situation where I know people is killing each other. I wouldn't do that. But coming down a, 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 a place where people live at, this is what people don't understand, bro. It's people that live in those areas where people have block parties at. Regular people like you and me. Uh, so imagine somebody down the street from you. It's late as fuck at night, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. You trying to sleep. You got work in the morning. And it's kids down the street blasting music loud as hell. Got the streets full of cars. Uh, you know, beer bottle drinking loud as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just too much going on in the neighborhood at night. Straight up, like all oh, this should not be going on in the neighborhood at night where I pay bills at, where I lay my head down, where I gotta go up, wake up in the morning to go to work. Y'all feel me? So I understand that situation. It's like they obviously need to pay more attention to that situation because they gotta get those kids out from them areas, make sure that they get home safely. You know, hopefully. Somebody parent they gotta wake up to their kid and got them, you know what I'm saying? Hit a tree or something or hit somebody driving home drunk. You know what I'm saying? Them are bad situations. So honestly, that would be a situation. If I was a cop, I would want to pull up too to solve that one. I wouldn't want to go pull up somewhere where they shooting sticks and I'm get might get shot that night. I wanna go home. Talking about violence in Chicago, and you're talking about the fact of kids, you're talking about the fact that you got this big 80% spur in violence within so a community. So you don't believe that this is happening, right? Uh, I believe that violence happened, but I believe it's, I believe that if you can say 80 here and there's no kind of violence in a white community, there's none. As many as many white officers that are killing their wives you have and, a run -in and domestic with violence disputes, there's no kind of spike in Valence over here, but you got 80% here. You're making all this up, man. Okay. If you, you well, I mean, you we just, get, you got your, you got your iPod. Let me, you, I let mean, me you got to pull it up and you see. Know, a little bit about, more about you. Okay. You were raised in Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. Without your father, right? Yes. You were raised with your mother and you grew up in a project or something? Uh, I grew up everywhere. In, in Louisville? Yeah. And your mother was on drugs? Yes. Uh, what was that like for you growing up as a kid? As mean as, uh, mom growing up, uh, it didn't it didn't too much bother me too much. Why not? Because uh, I always ate, I always had a place to lay my head. Uh, my mom still raised me as a good man. She took care of me, uh, even though she had a drug addiction. Her kids was taken care of, so we didn't have to worry about a lot of things that we that we uh, that norm, a lot of kids dealt with. Yeah, there was yeah. a problem, but once I was older, when it when it really hit her. I was a uh, ninth grader, eighth, ninth grader, and my mom really got bad on drugs. Right. But she had always, she had been on drugs since 1980. I didn't know it. And it was never like that, but I always knew how to take care of myself. So right. when I moved out at 14, my mom was on her own. And my mom, my mom got herself clean when I graduated, got my, uh, my second degree. She, were clean, she was clean. So I think uh, some people, you know, uh, yeah, I definitely would have wished I had a daddy there. Yeah, some. What was your father? Oh, uh, doing his thing. He was married. Had a woman. He was married to a lady with like five kids. Uh, he was raising their family, and that's something you see in the black community. It's a lot of it's a lot of uh, guys raising other people's yeah, kids. I know. And man. I mean, but also at the yeah. same time, you gotta you gotta understand when you look at the child support system, when you look at the fact that they're giving men. A f oh, he's full of excuses. Here goes some more. Let me let me prepare myself. Hold on, y'all. Let me prepare myself for the excuse. All right, I'm good now. Felonies in five and ten years in penitentiary for missing child support, which is not only just that. It's not only taking them away from their kids. That's not good, but that's not a reason to leave your family. I don't know it's definitely not a reason. You got to go back Were to the 1980s. Were you able to be with your father? Uh, my mama never told me he couldn't see me. So Were you able to see him? Yeah. Were you see? Did you see him while I saw him up? off and on? Off and on and. Yeah. Were you close to him at all? Mm, I was close to him because he was my father. I, I'm, I'm just, I've always been a different breed that you might not have been around me like yet, mm -hmm. but I still, you're my dad, I respect you. I still talk to him, I talk to my dad all the time now right. since I got older, but he's always going to get that level of respect because I'm a piece of him. So I don't be like, oh, it's your fault. Yeah, you, you, made, you made a mistake as a man, 
but I can't fault you for whatever reaction mm -hmm. you did, but you're still my dad. You forgave so, him for not being Yeah. Yeah. Did you tell him that? Yeah. Okay. He knows it. Let me ask. Uh, so you told him that? Yes. How did you find out your mother was on drugs? I kept seeing a funny look on mm -hmm. her face. And uh, I, it was weird because uh, I lived in a community out Shea Bark Apartments in Louisville where it was um, probably 300 families and no dads. It was no dads out there mm -hmm. at all. It was all women. Yeah. So he talking about some projects, uh, you know, that the government built to make life easier on black families without the fathers there. You know, they didn't they couldn't have the father there because that was the requirement to be able to get in those kind of apartments for cheap, for cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, and it turned out to be hell, a bad decision on women. Uh a very bad decision for the women to do, for sure. And you know, and a lot of people forget that in the nineteen eighties uh, you know, in the 1980s under the Reagan administration, they said, hey, we're going to replace, we're, we're going to give you a man and we're going to make you happy. And by doing this, you don't have to worry about nothing. You don't have to worry about them cheating on you. You don't have to worry about anything like that. And they brought Section 8. They brought the new welfare system. Right. Yeah, but that's a choice. They chose to kick the man out and chose to take that. They didn't have to take it. They could have just stayed with the man, worked the job that they had to, and paid regular bills in a regular part of the area like a lot of other people chose to continue to do. As part of doing that, you had to kick the black man out the house. Right. Why do you uh, think that happened under Reagan? I think it happened because it's under the drug administration. They were pushing drugs into the black community on, in the 70s, and then in the 80s, it was like, hey, we got them on the streets. Let's lock them up. But that didn't happen under Reagan. It happened that, under, that happened under no, both. No, the, the say no to drug. What? The say no to drug no, let's happened go back under to Nancy the Reagan. Let's go back. The say let's no to drugs, to, no. that was under Nancy Reagan. Let's go Reagan. back to the welfare thing. Go ahead. Took the father but, out. But it's, Why it, do was you say that it was happened. a different tone. Hold on a minute. Go ahead. Food stamps and uh -huh. government programs. Why do you say that happened under Reagan? It, it did happen under Reagan. Why do you say that? Because there was more floods. There was, in the 1980s, there was more flood of crack cocaine. I personally think it was Lyndon B. Johnson. Into the black like, community than anything. More than that had to do with welfare. And because the new welfare system came under the 1981 uh, Welfare Act, uh -huh. it was a new change. And part of that, you can have two incomes. You can even have an income coming into your family. So the women that were raising kids were single home. They were single home, stay at home moms. They had boyfriends or had husbands that were still working, but they were not married. So they said part of this system, if you're in Section 8, are you on the welfare system? If there's any kind of income coming into the family, you get kicked off that. So most women, what they were saying, look, hey, I'm not putting up with your stuff or I'm not doing this. A lot of black men got locked up and got pushed out. Right. So that's the reason why when I look at the when I but look it at happen. So you basically just proved that it was a choice. <laughs> he basically just explained how it was a choice, how they kicked them out, how they did that to be able to get on that government assistance program. Not that it was forced. If, if that was forced, hey, it will be a whole different story. I, would, I could say, hey, maybe the maybe they is trying to keep no, but it wasn't no choice. It was it was it wasn't no force. It was a choice. So, yeah, it's mean, a lot. That's why it started, that's no, why that's why Clinton with, couldn't even get my vote. Minute. Go ahead. It started with Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon, you, you, you're going back. You, sip, but that's, that's a different. Be, that, no, you're going back way. Yeah, they started with LBJ when JFK got assassinated. He got assassinated by the government. And they put Lyndon B. Johnson in, man, and they flooded all that shit up and up. Uh, they knew that people, they knew, they knew how to keep the people under a certain stigma, you know, how to, they brought in all that income shit. They brought in all that welfare shit. Them some evil motherfuckers, man. And they thought that shit out very well. And then they followed the, the master plan, was was the assassination. And they did it. That was the start of their plan. Real talk. The start of their plan was the assassination, but they've been thinking about this kind of thing for many and many years. They knew they weren't going to be able to beat JFK. They wanted to implement that shit right then and there. And they knew it was going to work because it was a good time to do it. The black people just lost their leaders. <laughs> of course, they're going to eat on that. <laughs> you're going back, you're going, that right there it. is a little bit different. No, that, it's the same. It just no, it's grew. not. It grew as years. No, it's not. Out. That's a different. But let me let me ask you. Tell us. You had a run in with the police. Uh huh. Tell us about that. 
The running with the police. Uh, you, this is while you were living in Kentucky. This is when I was in Louisville, yeah. yeah. Uh, what happened? Uh, I had just had a party. Uh, I was a party promoter. I threw mail reviews. I threw all kind of parties. Right. And um, we were downtown, and one of my friends had had a party that didn't go so well. So I never walked into the party. I used to just stand outside. And when the people were coming out, uh, a cop car was speeding past no lights or whatever. And I was like, oh, slow down. You said it to the cop? Yeah, I was like, slow down. Oh, you and, said uh, it so nicely. Yeah, I said exactly oh, like slow that. slow down. I said, slow down. A boy in the hood saying it that I night. wasn't in the hood. Oh, where were you? I was downtown. I was downtown Louisville. <laughs> slow so, down. Yeah, slow down. Okay. Very, very, very simple thing because, you know, it's weird because I remember going through, uh, and I say don't say weird, uh, I was going through a neighborhood and I was going like 25 miles per hour. And I remember a lady saying, slow down. Kids playing. People walking across the street. Uh, so you a cop car speeding past without your lights on. Uh, people are walking uh, across the street. Some of them intoxicated. Some of them in Louisville jaywalking is different. Like right. here you can't jaywalk. Right. Louisville you just you walk across it, yeah. the street. They don't care in the south. So anyway, you, so you the told cop this car stopped. Slow down. He stopped. He backed up. He said, "What did I say?" I was like, "Oh, I was like slow down because people are walking past." He got a car and said, "Come put your hands on top of the vehicle." When I put my hands on top of the vehicle, he said, "You're on arrest for public intoxication." I said, "What?" I said, all right, I get out tomorrow. And that's the sad part about being yeah. being raised in a black community where cops mess with you all the time. We're okay with getting OR'd and going to fight. Like going, lock me up, I'm gonna get out tomorrow, I'm gonna get out in eight hours, I go to court, look, dude, I ain't do nothing, dismiss without proper cause, good. And when he locked me up, uh, I've been a wrest I wrestled in college, uh, wrestling in high school, I'm a wrestling coach. Uh, he stepped over. And what, before he started doing that, he was pulling on my elbow. So both my hands, one of the things you learn as a black man when you get pulled over and locked up all the time, you automatically put your hands behind your back. And I put my hands, I automatically just put my hands behind my back. I don't started, know why he said as a black man, everybody get told that, bro. Uh, everybody get taught that. Uh, I remember when they came to our school when I was a younger dude, and they literally, <laughs> they literally came with firefighters. They came with cops. They showed us how the motherfucking taser hit. They show what the fuck you supposed to do whenever you got pulled over. They showed a video on TV. It wasn't just black people in my school. It was whites, Mexicans, Chinese, all type of shit. Asians, probably some Asians was in class. Like it was everything. So uh, not not just black men get taught that. Black men need to get taught that because when they get pulled over, they be acting a whole different way than this. Uh, this is how you supposed to act when you get pulled over. Respectful. I'm pulling over on my elbow. So when he started pulling over on my elbow, it was looking like I was turning towards him. And I was like, man, why you keep pulling my elbow? And he didn't say nothing. Then he stepped over. When he stepped over, I put my feet together like this. And I said, why are you trying to hip toss me? Which is a common thing in wrestling is a headlock hip toss. When he did that, I went like, and said, hey, why are you trying to hip toss me? And he kicked my legs. When he kicked me, I landed I'm on sorry, my face. Yeah. So I'm not laughing at him. Uh, no, it's more. It's, I mean, I I, yeah, we, I ended up going to jail. Go ahead. Here. But yeah. So you ended, ended up, up going to jail. jail. Yeah. Ended up going to jail. Um, How long were you in jail? Uh, five hours. Five hours. I got out in five hours, which is weird. And then you went to was eight. Then you went to court after I that? I went to court. I you sued court. them? No, I'm in the process of suing right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went. I, I got locked up. They charged me five things. Uh, menacing, disorderly conduct, public intoxication. Uh, assault on a police officer, all five of them got dismissed. Do you have a criminal record? No. Uh, let me ask, uh, do you believe white police officers are racist? Some, not all. No. Uh, do you support, you, you've heard of Black Lives Matter? Yeah. That agitating racist black group that's running around the country? You said what? That agitating racist, racist? black I don't, group. I don't think it's racist. I mean, there's well, black- not racist, there's, you're right. Yeah, there's it's black cops. Evil. But, uh, evil some black, black cops are harder on blacks than white cops do are. Do you support that group? Yeah, I support but, any positive movement. You think as, black as long life, as it's positive. You think Black Lives Matter is a positive group? I think it is. They uh, were chanting, kill the cop. What do we want? Dead cops. When do we want them now? They want pigs in the blanket. These were the leaders? It, is that good? These were the leaders? Uh-huh. Of the Black Lives Matter. I, Is I, that good? I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it, but I don't. It's it's hard. It's hard to look at that. It's hard to it's hard to say that you support a group and you don't really know about them. Like 
you support them, but you didn't even read them to them to even know anything that come about that's with it. I don't you know. You go off Huey P. Newton, who started uh, the Black Panthers, and at some point they stepped forward and said, hold on, cops, you can't keep killing our people. You are the people that are policing us. You can't keep killing us. You can't keep doing this. Are you saying so, yes is good or it's not good? I'm, I'm, I'm saying violence against police is not good. But I think if you see a police officer beating on people and hitting them, I think as citizens, we need to step forward. If black, people, black young people didn't commit so many crimes and they were not out of control in violent ways throughout the country, uh -huh. would the officers have to be so tough on them? You, you think, you know, you know the actual, when it comes to crimes. Can you uh, answer that rather than give me another stat? No, go ahead. Would the officers have to be tough on them if they were not so violent? Why do, why do you have to be tough on one group of kids versus another? No, just answer that first. No, that's what I'm asking you. Why? Would you ask me a question? I don't think the they should. I don't would think they, they have should. to be tough they if the blacks weren't so violent? No. They would Who, not have to be. Who's to say, because I'm not, are you valid? No. Okay, I'm and not so valid. cops are not tough He's on not valid. Yo, we're not violent. But as black men in America, we should know that, that black people is violent. <laughs> you should have experienced it. You should have seen it multiple times in person to know that it is true. Black people are definitely violent. But they're not so, tough on me because of that. White cops. I'm sorry? What cops? None. What neighborhood? None. It depends on what neighborhood you're But have, even right? if I was in the hood, I wouldn't be that way. So you're saying, yes, the cops would still be tough on the blacks, even as we were not so violent. I definitely think they would. And why? I think they believe the blacks are going to act a certain way. Uh -huh. No different than when you're on a plane and you see uh, a guy with a... Uh, with a sheik on his head, you automatically going to think, oh, could that be a Stereotype. terrorist? America, America, That's what you think? I think America taught us racism. Do you racism. think that when you see them? I think, I think America taught us racism. Do you think that when you see a Muslim on the plane with that thing on his head, you're like, wow, I wonder if there's a bomb in there. Uh, yeah, this is, be, this is way before. This is before <laughs> I don't seven, blame you, man. You're a Christian. <laughs> yes. Barack Obama ordered the schools to allow men and women who think that they're a man or think that they're a woman, if it's vice versa, to go into whatever bathroom, shower, or dressing room or locker room that they want to go into because they feel like a woman or they okay. feel like a man. Are you for that? The transgender uh, people, are you for that? It depends. In public schools, no. Uh, I think in the regular community, yeah. So you agree that any man that thinks that he's a woman a woman who thinks that she's a man to be allowed to walk into the showers, the locker rooms and, of their choice. I don't think and you're saying dressed. thinking versus having the actual body parts. That's the term I think that people so are you, getting. You okay people, with them if they have if, the body if you, parts? If you have breasts, if you're a man and you have breasts and you're going through pre-op trans uh, transition to become a woman, yes, don't go into the man's restroom. Go ahead and go to the women's because. Is is I think it creates more but problems. But just because you change your body parts, does, it, does that make you a woman? I think it doesn't make you a woman. You're still a man. It, you're still a man. Right. But at the same time, if your body looks like that, go ahead and go to where you're comfortable at. But how about Be if they don't have the body part changed and they uh, feel they like a man or they feel they like know. a woman? Should they be allowed to go into the men's showers? No, they shouldn't that? be allowed to do it. Uh -huh. And I think it's what... So you just agree even, with that part. But even... Hey, so he basically saying... If he done transitioned and got the dick shopped off, he could go in there with the female. Hey, I mean, we got to, I don't think we never going to be able to stop him, bro. So if we got to come to a compromise, that is an okay compromise that a motherfucker could fall into. Look, I ain't going to lie. I really thought the video was going to be more OC than it was. I ain't going to lie. I thought it was going to be more OC than it was. It was straight, but it was OC. If y'all get what I'm, y'all know what I'm saying. But hey, fuck it, Nick. It, what it is. It was a cool video, though, you know. Uh, if y'all enjoyed this video, reacting to it with me, man, be, be sure to turn into my other videos. I got this option. I got two more options right here, too. So make sure to click one on, man, before you click off. Subscribe before you click off as well. Instagram right there. You want to contact me. Twitter, Twitch. I'm on there live almost every night. No doubt, man. Make sure y'all tune in. It's be your boy, Vir Reacts. Peace.